good. I see um, we're uh, we're both in our in our home studios. I know. Oh, look, our walls match. <laughs> what is? What do you have? I have um. I couldn't even tell you what I have. What is that? What the wall? Right. No, like not the. I oh, know what a, a I know what a wall is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? What's what's the wall? It's an assortment of plaster people put on, on uh, to protect themselves. To protect themselves from the elements, people use walls, Marcelo. It's, uh... I thought you meant the color of the wall because I go, oh, we have the same color of wall. And you go, oh, what's that? Like it's a vanilla number nine at Home Depot. <laughs> I must be vanilla number nine as well because when I do a green screen, it doesn't. I blend in with the wall. <laughs> you guys are the same. That's that's your pigment is the wall. Okay. Yeah, but I'm getting I'm getting more tan, so I'm becoming less less vanilla. I'm tr I'm trying to do that as well. I used to be tan as a when I was growing up in Miami, like really young, and I was playing soccer, and then New York, it made me pale. Yeah. Well. I'm in New York. I'm getting tanned, but it's just because we've nothing else to do. So, New York in the summer gets you tan. I feel that. Yeah, and also because we've nothing to do, so I'm outside more, just like walking around, just aimlessly. <laughs> oh, bravery. That's bravery. <laughs> oh, because of the pandemic. No, you have to walk outside. I'll die if I don't. Uh, yeah, I mean, or you'll die if you will. <laughs> That's the other <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a roof, so. I'm sorry, I can't get it out of my head. What's the painting? What's what is oh, it? Oh, it's not. It's a mirror. Ooh, it's this thing that people look into to see how they look. Ah, I've learned. I've already learned wall and mirror with you. <laughs> is there anything else you want to teach me? Is that couch? These are glasses. <laughs> just Ooh. to see better. <laughs> wow. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> Okay, so for the podcast, oh, hi, how old are you? I am 22. 22, so you're the youngest guest. This is actually really interesting because I was thinking about it. So the podcast is basically about uh, are people you've met. And Every time I go to say this introdu introduction, I like fuck up on my words. <laughs> but <laughs> okay. it's uh, meeting people in real life. So kind of like an anti-online dating podcast, which I feel like uh, and like stories, success or failures, and tips on how to meet people in real life. But I feel like for you, you would have grown up with online dating, right? It'd be. I mean, I think we can consider Instagram online dating. Yeah, that's true. But I was always, I don't know, I was always scared of Insta. Like, I think my, the relationships that I think I've enjoyed the most, you know, all two of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, in my 22 years, um, I think they've they've been with people that I've met in person. I think meeting somebody in person, it's um, it takes off that like uh, that cringy, you know what I mean? There's a cringy, uh, I think, constant idea in a couple that's met on Tinder. They just they're always cringing yeah. all the you know all the time because they're waiting for someone to be like, "How'd you meet?" Me? <laughs> and then they're like, "We were swiping." And yeah. they're scared of saying it. And when you meet someone that you're excited to tell the story because it was like chance. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's like a weight off your shoulders. You know, you're like, oh, we can talk about how we met. Actually, I'm excited. Yeah, because then there's usually like a, a meet cute, like, oh, I bumped into them and blah, 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 whatever. Right, exactly. Versus, oh, well, you know. <laughs> they were one of 50 I swiped on and they just right. happened to match with me. So I was like, <laughs> right. ah, fuck it. We'll go on this date. Right. And the th the issue, I think, I don't know. I have a, an old school mentality when it comes to this, because I think the issue with um, online dating is it's so unrealistic. You know, like you get to go into the into the date knowing so much it's like, is that usually how it goes down? Do you usually have like so much information? When you meet somebody out at a bar, they're taking you at face value. And that is so refreshing. Like someone that hasn't swiped through your failed posts. It's like, it's nice. No, that is so true. Because when you meet someone at a bar, like if you meet someone online, you can go generally you can Google them before you even meet them. So yeah, you can know a lot. And that actually means then you run out of questions for the first time like <laughs> right. you know you already know so much you're already like a couple of steps ahead 
Yeah. How hard is it to pretend? Like, think about every time you've had to do this. How hard is it to pretend to be surprised? <laughs> and then you're like, oh, that picture with their sister. Is it their sister? Is it their wife? And you're like trying <laughs> to get to that. Like, oh, I was on your Instagram and that girl was wearing a lovely dress. Uh, who is she? <laughs> Most people are such bad actors. It's just, it's not a good idea yeah. to, to go into it knowing stuff and then be like, so where did you grow up? Yeah, yeah. I don't know your, <laughs> your grades from college that I found online. Yeah, it, it comes off weird. Also as well, I guess when you're chatting online, um, you, have, you ask all these questions like, oh, where did you grow up? Or like, how many brothers and sisters do you have? And then it's not as meaningful because it's not a real connection so sometimes you can forget and when I do meet up with them they're like oh you already asked me this and I'm like yeah but I wasn't I was texting I didn't I didn't know you then so just repeat <laughs> it now I didn't store any of that information in my need to remember brain right now I like you so repeat yourself <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it didn't mean anything to me then but now now yeah, I you were one of 50 I was asked I was copying and pasting the questions from oh say. man I mean for girls it must be great like you're your Tinder is much different than a man's Tinder. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> You're not on Tinder? Well, I'm not on Tinder anymore, but like I was on Hinge. And I do know that in the pandemic at one stage, I copied my intro and would just paste it to, so, because guys would be like, hi, where are you? And I just, and then I looked and like all of the same, <laughs> it was just the same answer for everybody. Oh man. But I was like, I can't be Iris writing back a unique response to everybody. Yeah. I don't, I think there's a, dis, there's a, there's a huge disparity between the amount of men on these apps and the amount of women. So you think there's more men? Way more men. Oh. Way more men. I mean, how often do you hear about the girl who's too nervous to talk to guys versus the guy that's too, I think the guy that's too nervous is way more around, you know? Yeah. 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 I guess so. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, wait, but so for you, would you have like, cause I'm just thinking uh, online dating for me is only like four or five years. So you would have been like 18. Uh, yeah. So I would mean, that have been I, the norm? Would that have been the norm? Well, no, because we also didn't embrace it when it first came out okay. and it's like, yeah, it's, it wasn't like, <laughs> Oh, perfect. It's the new, <laughs> it's the new thing. Um, you know, I think, Meeting somebody on YouTube, like, for example, if one of my friends came out to us that he has a girlfriend from Tinder, we would, we, our eyebrows would raise. Okay. So it's still, that's, that's mad. It's still pretty like. Yeah. I think like, it's actually the older generation that embraced it. Like people that are, you I'm know. Tired, bitter. <laughs> right. And they're like, I can't find shut anybody. Up. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, shut up. It worked. Okay. <laughs> like. It's working, you know? Yeah. I guess for people who are too focused on their career as well, it's just easy. Because you can find a man while you're weeing, you know? It's like, for the people who have too much I can't to do. Get over your, I can't get over your accent. I can't believe your whole life, anytime you have to say peeing, you say weeing. Every time. It's not <laughs> yeah. like once. It's every time. Yeah, no, you know, it's just normal to me. <laughs> when you're weeing, you can meet a guy when you're weeing. That's true, you know? These yeah. guys need to know that most of the time when we're swiping, we're on the loo. You're on the loo. Yeah. <laughs> Those are, they just, they just, you just went back to back. It just like hit me like, <laughs> when I'm weeing on the loo, I'm like, oh my God, culture suck. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, it's true. I guess it's true. Yeah. And, and the other thing is when you meet somebody in person, like you can have a bad day via text. You know, you didn't think of anything interesting. You know, you messed up here or there. That happens. But in person, you got to turn it on, man. You're more aware. You're more on the spot. You're, it's survival instinct. You just go into your best self. Hey, you can fail very easily live. It's hard to fail on the Tinder because you can write something and then delete it. Oh. But in person, you're like, <laughs> you're like, yeah, my, you look like my mom. And oh, yeah. then, <laughs> <laughs> that's so that's, funny you, you get yeah, to meet it when you're on tinder i have one guy i went on an online date and he kept sweating and he was really nervous and we talked for like three weeks this is a few years ago but he 
when we went out, you just kept being like, I can't believe you're on this day with me. You're too pretty for me. I can't believe you're on this day. And he said it like 20 times, so much so that I felt I had to stay for like two drinks because I didn't want to oh. kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you were like, so much so that I believed him and I left. <laughs> you're right. I am too pretty for you. <laughs> you um, have a I, point. <laughs> yeah, I felt bad. And he just kept, he was like dripping sweat. And I was like, this guy needs like Xanax. And he Ooh. seemed lovely via text message and chatty. But yeah, it's... Oh wait, okay, so for you in real life, what, like, have, have you any, like, success stories, or how did you meet people, or what do you do? Oh my god, so many questions at once, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, I, uh, I have, I have a hinge. Uh, I don't, I don't love the hinge. It sounds like I, a horror movie. And I used to meet, um, well, like, before the virus, I used to meet every I used to meet people every night because I was always at comedy at a comedy club. And then after a show, you know, you're, you're, you're out there, you're hanging out. So even if a you know, person walks down the street, you meet them. And I was selling tickets on the street. So for the past year, every every girl I met was on the street and like either at a show or something. The, the success story or someone that like I, I liked that I met in person, it was um. It was pretty interesting. And this is something, listen how interesting this story is versus I'm excited. I swiped and then we, were, <laughs> we matched. I swiped and then I invited her to dinner versus I was doing a show in Brooklyn at like a turf soccer field and it's like 12 people and there's this blonde girl and she's pretty and she's sitting there and the host obviously goes through everybody and she's like, so what's going on with you? Are you, are you, know, are you single? And she's like, yeah, actually recently single. And he's like, oh, you know, some host joke. And then, <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> Where are you from? Oh, I hate yeah, Canada. Yeah, the yeah, geese. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to mingle. I mean, like just whatever. He could have been a good host. He could have come up with something clever. I'm not going to, I'm not yeah. going to say anything. Um, but so I, I just heard that. I just remember hearing that. And I only saw her from the back of the head, blonde girl, recently single, move on. I go on stage, I have a decent, I have a fun time, you know, 12 minutes or something like that. And then after the show, I'm hanging out, like meeting people. And I, I'm like, I'm going to go outside um, for a second. I think somebody was going to smoke or something. And I was like, I wanna, we're going to go outside. You want to, you know, come talk for a minute? She's like, sure. So we went outside, we started talking you know, just about life. Oh, where are you from? Do you, you know, what have you done in the past? Where are you, you know, why are you in New York? What are you doing here? Um, back and forth. And then she's like, and then it's the, it's like a movie. The, the friend, the friend is like, come on, <laughs> we're leaving. And she's like, oh, I gotta go. And then I have to like, you know, dun, 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 dun. I gotta be like, can you give me your number before you go? And she's like, sure. Yeah. I'll do that. And then I give her my phone. She puts the phone number in. She gives it to me. And she goes, it was nice meeting you. I was like, Aww. nice to meet you too. Bye-bye. And she leaves. And then in that moment, it's a totally different dynamic. Now yeah. it's like, is he going to make a move? Did we just match on t yeah. like, you know? There's a bit so, of excitement. Yeah. So I actually texted her. She said she was going, she, she was like, we're going to this bar. And then she left. And then I texted her and I was like, I think I'm going to come by. She's like, okay, we're still here. So we went by the bar. We hung out more. We had some drinks. And then, you know, we ended up hanging out for like, you know, weeks after that, after, you know, meeting in person. Yeah. And then anybody we met on the street, it was like, oh yeah, we met at a show. She was at a show. You know, she's recently moved into the city. She lived on the outskirts and then it was fun. Oh, I love that. What happened? Why aren't you married? <laughs> <laughs> I love love. <laughs> I would say um, in New York, when I was selling tickets on the street, all, most of my, like anybody that I met was doomed, likely. Oh. You know, I was selling tickets five, four or five nights a week from like 6.45 yeah. to, you know, one in the morning. So unless, and I wasn't going to date someone that worked at the club yeah, or yeah. a comedian. Yeah, so everybody was pretty much doomed. You know, I felt like, Everybody, every girl that I met in New York while I was selling tickets felt disrespected. Because you weren't giving them time. Right. And like, if I was giving them time, it was like, you know, really late 
or like yeah. where you're like hey i'm giving you a half an hour right now this is so precious to me you should be so happy that's why they're feel. like i'm not this type of girl <laughs> you know what no, i mean no because you're coming over late yeah right yeah. i'm a i was i was uh, yeah I and was you're like my, it's just my job here look they all you'll be like skater boy song avril lavigne do you know that are you old enough <laughs> you <laughs> yes, know i know okay i know skater boy I know skater <laughs> i'm only boy. like eight years older than you um but oh my god that sounds like a lot when i said it out loud but um, are you 23 Number this year scared you huh? are, you, are you 23 this I'm year i'm 23 in like a month yeah okay i'm only seven years older than you Woohoo! okay uh, <laughs> that's my american <laughs> 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 but no wait so you'll be like a, a skater boy they'll all regret it when you're famous and they're like oh i should have been okay with the 1 a.m calls because now he's like huge yeah i guess we i hope <laughs> yeah, you will be definitely 100%. Um, that's a nice story. They suffered the fail because you're following your dreams, but um, <laughs> right. And like, don't get me wrong, it's like you want to in that moment, at a, as a 20, let me ask you maybe, let's see what would you do in my situation. You're 22, right? You're trying to get into comedy, you're selling tickets on the street every night. You meet a girl, she's great, she's fun, she's nice. She yeah. wants to have like a real thing where like you meet for dinner at eight or you see them every day and then you don't get to sleep in because you were out till four. Do you sacrifice? Do you start making sacrifices at 22 years no old for a, for a, I for a do relationship? I don't even do it now. I wouldn't even do it now at, <laughs> at 29, like nearly 30. I'm like, if you want to see me, yeah, like I'll fit them in and make the effort, but no, comedy always comes first, 100%. Yeah, so it's tough. I was I was doomed. I was doomed. Yeah, no, and you shouldn't be in a serious... Because what could happen now, especially at 22, you're getting a serious relationship, could break up in five years, and then you'd be like, oh, I, I should have been using that time to focus on comedy. And there is someone, you know, like, maybe, like, you, you just have to focus on certain professions. So, like, musician, like a girl who's a musician, you know? She's going to be doing her shit at night. Or even an artist. A lot of artists work at night. I used to be an artist, right. and I was working until 10 or 11 o'clock at night, so they're more likely to do stuff during the day. And um, you just need to fit yeah. someone who fits into your, into your world. Yeah, That's but isn't that, is, isn't that kind of weird to be like, I need a musician? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I need, I, you know, we all have ones. I don't know about a musician, but I mean, <laughs> to make it fit with your, with your job. That's just it, you yeah. know, unless it's someone really understanding. Like my friend, he was, he's married now to a teacher. Oh, Leclerc Andre. But he said that, his wife was so great because she just knew that he would he dedicate like Sunday to her and then, she, you know, try and fit her in at other times. But she was like, yeah, I get it. Yeah. You know, and that's, how, you just. How, how old is uh, Leclerc? Way older than you. So don't, this is like, he's like 30. I'm like feeling five. bad. I'm like, should I have blocked no, 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 off no, no, my no. Sunday? <laughs> no, 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 no. He's like 35. So like, I mean, and even then when you're older, you, oh, I don't know how old he is. He could be 33 actually now that I say that. But even then, when you're older, um, you can still be like, I have to do this at night. I, the People are going to understand. No, you yeah. should have. You're fine. I'll tell you what, though. I, I have been using Hinge during the quarantine. Yeah, same. I was. Know, well, that's, I think Hinge is, Hinge is like the, you know what I mean? The, the Soho house of dating apps. You yeah. know? I don't know it what It feels, this- feels nice. Yeah. I feel like I'm at a, I feel like I'm at the standard. You yeah. know? <laughs> no, I wonder, do we have Hinge in Ireland, actually? I guess one of the listeners can tell me, but I don't know. So I don't Hinge know if I, Ireland. I don't know if I should explain it, but yeah, it's like a fancy, I like it because they, they ask the questions and you have to, I, I really used the questions to kind of swipe no on people. <laughs> like not on their face but on like the dumb answers or because some of them are just so detailed it's like you'll know if i like you if i let you pet my forehead or some fucking bullshit Mm. like that i said forehead because mine is so big it's hard to miss when i'm looking at my own reflection (laughs) but you know what i mean like these stupid fucking well it's like i just want normal you know but yeah I prefer I prefer the questions that aren't saying much, like the yeah, answers that don't too. say much. Yeah, yeah, just a couple like, of. Right. Yeah, you'll know I like you if you know, I make you mac and cheese. I'm like, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. You made me mac and cheese. Thank you. Yeah. My my answers are pretty. I'm not okay, saying what's anything. What's yours? What's really. yours? Do you know? Remember? I think. Yeah, I, I I remember one of them for sure. It's um, you know how it's the true or false thing. 
Yeah. It's like true or false. And then oh, you're yeah. supposed to write like, you know, potatoes are bad or something. <laughs> and oh, it was like true or false. And I just wrote true or false. I don't remember what I wrote. Oh, I understand. I answered, I answered the question. <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. I love that's that. That's my that's move. Great. That's great. That's great. Yeah, no, I, yeah. Oh, and then the other one, I remember my other one. I only have two questions on there. The other one is, um, we'll get along if. (laughs) You don't want to see me ever. (laughs) Right. (laughs) We'll get along if you understand that my career takes up a lot of my time. No, yeah. (laughs) I am going to be a successful comedian. (laughs) Right. Um, We'll get along if um, you, I wrote, I wrote you like. And then I wrote the word jokes in Spanish. Oh, great. Right. I love that. There's so much there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Can you the speak story. Spanish? And do you like jokes? Fabulous. Right. So it, um, I, I've noticed it answers all the questions. That, like their answers to my answers says a lot. Yeah. If they even write first, because yeah. that's also rare. Do you have an age limit on yours? Um, I'm sure I have an age limit on mine. <laughs> <laughs> I have above 27. <laughs> 27 plus. Yeah, yeah. You're like, I don't want any of these <laughs> middle of the table boys. Yeah, no, I just was like, I don't know. I was just like, I think 27 is like an appropriate age. It's not, you know, two years, you know, guys over 27 might be a bit more understanding about the fact that they can't see them. I don't know. I d- dated a 24 year old and he was a little bit like, sad and when we i know you're 22 but he was oh, just like a little on. like he was a little sad when we like expressed like how do i explain it he just wasn't very mature but so are guys my age <laughs> so i guess it depends on when you the person you meet but yeah we just didn't right. uh, and why what 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 happened what was it about the 24 year old that got you in the beginning you know oh he's really hot right. sucker for hot <laughs> that's that's what it comes down to i think I think we will deal as human beings, we will deal with a lot of stuff based on how attracted we are to somebody. <laughs> you know, it's so true because like when I'm seeing someone and if they're mean and if they're like really hot, I'm like, ah, whatever, they're hot. But if they're mean and they're not that hot, I'm like, who does he think he is with his receding hairline? you fucking right. mean to me. Like. Right. <laughs> you open yourself up way more if you're not attractive and you're like, you have a lot of issues. Yeah. Like you, you create a lot of issues. Yeah, you got to. Then be you fucking... can say something like what you just said. Look at his receding hairline. <laughs> you know, I fucking Who does he think he is even going for me? And that's the good thing is, well, you'll have like, because here you'll have. So I guess the issue with in real life is that the guys who are confident. I guess well, you have the really good looking, confident guys. But then you have uh, the really ugly, confident guys, and you're like, what planet did you think it was okay to come up and hit on me? Like, I'm so offended. And it's fine if they're like nice and they come up and they're like, hey, like, hope you have a nice day, grand. But they come up and they're like, oh, I have a fancy car, or, or like, and I'm like, you look like a troll. You don't look you're being a dick, but flirty you know dick. What I, that's, <laughs> that's super interesting. And you know what I think that, you know, I think I know where that comes from. Okay. Okay. Those guys learn how to get girls from the hot guys <laughs> right and the hot guys are being very mean yeah. because they can yeah and then the the ugly guys are like dude all he did was like just be super mean the whole time and she loved him so now i'm gonna do it <laughs> that's so true where is it and now they're doing it the, the not attractive, like, I mean, because it's usually, like, really, like, like, I'll be out sometimes and the uh, the guy who uh, is, like, literally look like he walked out of a soft swamp will come up and hit on me. I don't know what it is. But I have a friendly face. So I'm just sitting there smiling at everybody. So, of course, they think I'm approachable. And secondly, if they were just nice, I'd probably, like, because I grew up on Disney, so I'm all about personality. Um, it just helps if they're hot. But, you know, you'd probably entertain them a bit more, but then they're, like, you want to kiss me, don't you? And I'm like, I don't even want to be breathing the same air as you right now. <laughs> oh, man. But you but see, I- that's, that's why in person is just the way to do it. It's just the way to do it. 
Well, that's why I think with like guys, they're like, they'll hear me say stories like that or women say stories like that. They're like, oh, I don't want to do that. And it's like, no, you can do that, but just be nice. It's just like, hey, how are you? Are you having a nice day? You look yeah. pretty. Or, or, or be nice at first you know what i mean work, work. <laughs> wait till they're trapped six months in then be a dick <laughs> earn it yeah. earn the mean comments you know make her warm up to you and then you know she chews with her mouth open and you're like yo hey <laughs> whoa that's disgusting yeah and she's like oh my god i've never seen this side of you you're acting like, like a hot guy this yeah. is crazy are you secretly hot <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're hiding behind that hairline? Is there actually a hot guy under there? So what's your what's your go-to move when you're like hitting on a girl in real life? Hey, My babe. go-to move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I go, I go, eh. <laughs> um, my go-to move. That's such a, um, I feel attacked by you just now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> how american of you girls girls always do this the girls are like so like what move do you use on every girl this is the podcast awful... i'm not just being a girl <laughs> it's meant you to give tips for man. people to meet people in real life everybody's answered the question <laughs> oh okay okay we're doing tips well no i i'll i'll answer the question i just want you to know that i feel attacked um, I'm glad that you can <laughs> you can express your your feelings. My go-to move. Um, I'm trying to think of like like because I've been in quarantine for three months. Because yeah. like talking to yeah. girls is like going to the gym. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like you, you start to get those questions and then you come up with good answers. Yeah. I think um, I think my move is to double down on who I am. So I think that talking to a girl is basically selling yourself, you know? So those, those early on, those questions that they ask you, you know, if you're honest, then they'll get a vibe for you and then they'll know, but they won't want to talk more to you if they can't get a vibe from you. So if she's asking you questions and you're like, you know, just kind of dodging them in a way, then she can't decide if she wants to get with you or not. Cause she already knows physically if she does or not. Yeah. And she just wants to know like mentally, is this some there, somewhere I should be? So give her all that information, yeah. you know? So where are you from? Oh, I'm from Miami. I used to, you know, uh, wakeboard. I love to go fishing, you know? Oh yeah. So don't just answer Miami. Give a bit more. Look at right. me. Get, I can use a board. Exactly. Exactly. Fish. Give them, give them stuff that they might like, you know, or that they can be like, they're not going to be like, oh, I kissed this boy. He's from Miami. They're going to be like, oh, I kissed this boy. He, you know, used to play soccer or he used to do something else. That's interesting. Make them yeah. interested. No matter what, everybody has something interesting. We all have too much time on our hands to not have done something interesting once in our life. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So okay. That's good. That. that's good advice. Any more success or failure stories from in real life? Um, success or failure um you know i was thinking today i was actually saying this on the other podcast but i i well i didn't say the story about it but when i was in ireland i was younger i was about your no i was younger than you maybe 21 and this american guy came up to us and then he started hanging out with us the whole night and then he was hanging out with me specifically the whole night so i was like oh yeah he's he's into me so we're sitting close and in a nightclub on a couch and i was like fuck it i'll go in for the kiss and when i went in he was like oh no 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 I, we're just friends and i was like oh i'm gonna die <laughs> wow. so it was, it was good first rejection but that was definitely a fail of in real life that and he waited rare. till i got close you know and then he was like Oh no, I can't remember if he said he had a girlfriend or something, but I remember just being like, well, now I have to sit here and still chat to him because, you know, I don't want to just run it off. <laughs> wow. That, that is, you went in for it. Well, that's what I get for trying What's... to kiss an American when I'm in my own country. <laughs> What's more vulnerable than this? I know, so for the listeners he just <laughs> leaned in for a kiss <laughs> to his computer <laughs> what's more vulnerable than closing your I eyes i mean that's I'm confidence just, i know yeah well you know <laughs> that's what confidence. you're like i'm gonna close my eyes and when i open them you're gonna be very close yeah but, well, fair play to 21 year old me i have to say 
Yeah, I have to say too. That's I'm very proud of you for that move. I'm trying to think of of, of a big failure because there have they they do exist. They have happened. Yeah, everybody has them. Um, to me, maybe I think they're more. Young. Yeah, maybe, maybe they're coming. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think my fail. I'm on my way to my failures. Um, my failures are are probably. See, this is another tip for maybe you don't have to listen to me, but um, I keep my failures to a minimum by staying as distant as possible. And it also helps because distant, the girl thinks you're being distant. She's like intrigued. And then distant, you know, she doesn't like you. You're like, well, thank God I'm distant. So you can't really. <laughs> so you don't you put yourself really... out there. That's terrible. There's probably girls who do like you and they're probably like, ah, he's not interested. See you later. I'm sure, but there's probably girls that don't like me and they're like, I'm so glad he gave up so quick yeah, because I, <laughs> I, like wish someone, I wish someone, I wish some other person given up on me quicker. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, biggest failure. I don't know. I think a big, a big fail for me was, um, I met a girl at a show and she left, she lived somewhere else. And then we talked a lot via text and FaceTime and I put in all this time and I guess, I was so just dumb for this, but um, she came to town for like two nights and we were talking a lot. Like I was spending a lot of time FaceTiming, yeah. texting, the whole nine yards. Yeah. And then she shows up, she's at some place and I had just finished, you know, working and I was like, ah, I'm not, I don't feel like it. Oh, you didn't feel like it. I'm like, I don't want to wait in line to get into a club. I don't yeah. want to uh, like, Is and it? she never <laughs> talked to me again. Yeah, that's Because so we shared a lot, yeah. you know? That's so funny. The same thing happened to me, but I'm that girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same thing, chopping lot, phone calls. And we didn't FaceTime. FaceTime is very intimate, by the way, as well. I go, I go, I start with the FaceTime. Okay. That's how I begin my 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 my, my girl relationship. I think, I think it's good. I think it's good, especially if you FaceTime off online, because then you get a vibe with them before you waste your time meeting up with them. But yeah, no, I definitely think. But yeah, same thing. Same. I think wow. he just was like, but when I when I was there, he was just like, oh, not. We did end up meeting a few days later because I was there for a week, but it was just not the same. And the fact that he didn't really want to meet up with me the first night, and I was like close by, I was kind of like, actually, do you know what? I've been talking to this guy for like two months, and he's like not arse to make the effort. So he was like, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm just like, my granny died. And I was like, did your granny died a month ago? You already told me that. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, we just, I just, we, we were, I was with the family today and stuff. So I was like, okay, whatever. Oh, my God. <laughs> you are, you are such a savage <laughs> for, for the comment. You already told me that. <laughs> what was like a month ago? <laughs> you know, like, you, you could be like, he could have even texted me when I got there being like, hey, saw you're here. I hope you're safe. Uh, I'm, I won't be able to meet up with you today or tomorrow because I have plans, but I'd love to meet up with you. And so, yeah, that would have been instead of just being like, like he was just very nonchalant. But I think it was just like you, like he was just probably like, oh, actually, this is like a couple years. <laughs> wow. I mean, that is. <laughs> We're actually still love... friends on Instagram, though. Like, and if I. Oh, if I... on Instagram. Well, do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, if I ever bumped into him, I would be very polite to him. Like, it was it never had a future anyway, but it was a similar story. <laughs> your, your granny's dead man she's <laughs> no, already it's just died like, you know to be like oh well, my granny died don't say that you just be like you know whatever but don't say that she died a month ago a month ago you know a month to mourn i i have never received uh, a, a a dead granny text and my first <laughs> thought was he already used that one <laughs> like, you're, you're, <laughs> You're like that's that's I don't know if you know this, my friend, but there's a one use rule with a dead granny excuse, and you've already exhausted that, so you're gonna have to either is this another granny? Is this your second granny? Because I'll give you another month if this is your second grandma. Let's stop. Well, the thing was, he didn't use it as an like, excuse when he told me, but like we were on the phone, and he was like, Yeah, my granny died today, and he was like, oh, I haven't told anyone yet, I just didn't feel like it. So you're the first person I've told. So we had like that shared like emotional connection. 
And then a month later, he's like, oh, I can't come out tonight. You know, my granny died. And I was like, yeah, dude, I was the first, apparently the first person you told a month ago. That phone call was very meaningful to me, motherfucker. <laughs> Oh, there were those, that, there were actually three girls to hang out with that night, and two mm -hmm. of them got the dead granny text, <laughs> yeah. and he forgot that one of them he had already told. Yeah. That's what happened. He was like, oh, <sighs> oh, darn. Yeah, I would love to be there when he received the message back, just gone, ah, uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the other girl was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Yeah, and she's like sending him like a wreath. <laughs> totally understand. And he's yeah. like, yeah. I wish other people were as understanding as you. Yeah, are. Irish women. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So that's so you didn't you didn't meet up with that girl and you didn't talk again. Never again. I even tried to reach out because I felt guilty. I was like, because for months she was like, two weeks. Like, and then she'd be yeah. coming in two weeks. She'd be like, two weeks. Oh my god, one anticlimax. Like, but then she showed up and she was at some like super prestigious club at some table, and I was like, I don't know. I've been the guy, I've been the guy that shows up to the club and then the guy that's paying for the table is there and I'm with one of the girls that's at the table and then there's this awkward like I'm just going to get my drinks at the bar. I realize I'm not a girl. I get it. I'm with this girl and now this girl is off the menu for all his friends. I just you feel guilty. You yeah. feel guilty. And would you not have because for her, she probably thought, I'm going to impress him. Like, my friends are going to this club. Um, would you not have been like, hey, uh, I don't want to go to a club. Do you want to just, like, hang out with me? Because to be honest with you, if you're talking to you that much, she probably was there, you know, to see you. So. Wow. This is my 21, 22-year-old <laughs> self kind of looking at myself like, you kind of goofed it there, buddy. You could have, <laughs> you could have offered the singular hangout. I could have said anything. I could have been like, when you're done, let's go get yeah. pizza or let's... Didn't, you missed out on some that. great sex. Perhaps. That's okay, Perhaps. though. What's for you? But maybe you would have had sex with her and I got an STD. Not saying that she is an STD. Or you could have had sex with her, left the apartment, got ran over by a car. So, as my dad says, what's for you won't pass yet. But just live and learn. Next girl will be like, no, nah, just meet me afterwards. <laughs> right. Or, or is there any way we can meet afterwards? I'm not in the mood for a club. Like... <laughs> I'm thinking of every possible text I could have used and instead I was just like, I don't think I answered or something. Oh, I don't no. know. Oh, you're such a lad. Uh, just a lad. Uh, I'm learning so much. <laughs> I'm like, ah. I came into this podcast like, oh, I'm excited. I'm going to reminisce on the good times. And it's like, no, that, that's, that's a mistake. Oh, wait. Be honest, Marcelo. Just be honest. So wait, because you met, when you messaged me, you were like, you thought this was an online dating podcast and you're like, oh, I have an online story. It's not, yes. but can I hear the story? Oh, yes, the online story. Wow. Um, this is a scary story. I don't even want to <laughs> I'm so excited. I don't even want to say the story. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, ah, there's just, okay. Beware of online dating for this reason. When you don't know a person well enough, and then you just meet them based on their profile. You don't get, you're, you're too hopeful. You're like, we swiped, it was easy. We can just hang out now and it's fun. I kind of got lost, I think, in the convenience of not, you know, so we went out, we had, we had tea, it was great. Then we, you know, maybe had dinner or lunch or something. And then we hung out one-on-one -on -one at her place, right? The answer is yes. And then, and then, um, and then literally, uh, sorry. This is the worst possible time for this to happen. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still okay. here. Okay. Cool. Oh, did you just go where it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, <laughs> no, when you get, when you get a FaceTime, your whole computer just shuts oh. down. Um, so, okay. So we hung out one-on-one. -on -one. We did the thing. We exactly. did the thing that people do when they're one-on-one. -on -one. Yum, lovely. Well, I don't know why I just said, right? yum, ew, that just made it so gross. <laughs> Sorry, I've never said that before. <laughs> we did that precise. thing, right? Yeah. And it was fun, good time. Um, and then... This must have been like on like from a Thursday to like a 
to like a Monday, like in that span. Yeah. Like from a Wednesday to a Sunday, like, like through two, like a week of dates, you know, we're really getting to know each other. It's fun. We want to hang out again. Yeah. Right. And then, and then once this ends, my work starts again. She doesn't know what it's like for me to work. Yeah. She knows what it's like for me to like, you know, spend four, four or five days, you know, like, oh yeah, I can make that. Okay. I can make that. Okay. I can make that. And that was like me stretching, you know, it's this new thing. You want to see them. You want to do right by them. So you do it. And then work started and it was kind of like, I'm sorry, I can't do it tonight. Or, I'm sorry. I can't do it tonight. And then she shows up at my work. Drunk. Oh no. Telling, asking everybody, where is my boyfriend? Oh no. Oh, Where's my boyfriend? Have you seen my boyfriend? And then now I have this fantastic story of me being in the back of the room and my buddy being like, yo, there's a girl. She says she's your girlfriend. She's talking to everybody. Just stay in there. Yeah. Just don't come outside. Yeah. I'm like, okay. All right. She goes, yeah, I told her you weren't here. I told her you were <laughs> over there somewhere else. And this is how I know she was drunk. It's because he said over there and she just went over there. <laughs> she just went to an over there that there was so like that i think that's the danger of the online dating is that the beauty of meeting in person is that you kind of get to like break that down and like so. kind of see that but after the swiping you're like in this like cloud nine where you're like oh you know everything is so easy everything is so fine and i just got i got also, as well, if you've been chatting online, they might think in their head they're further along. Because, like, how she thought you were a boyfriend. But, so did she ever hear from her again, or she just disappeared after that? I mean, I disappeared after that. <laughs> <laughs> you went back to Miami. This was, yeah. <laughs> never mind the virus. You know? <laughs> she, she did not want to disappear. She, she, and, and the thing is, is that as a guy, it's not easy to you know but she came to your work like the comedy club right um and then how did you get rid of her after that like obviously she kept she kept texting you or calling or something right yeah but then it was just you know i think i i, I did the, the big text thing you know the long you uh, had to break up with her when you're not even together yeah i did because yeah. because i was just like i mean you get that's weird that's fucking weird no, it's, that's mental. It's absolutely insane. It, it's just, like I feel feel bad for that girl because and we did it. And we, and we didn't well. meet at we didn't meet at summer camp when we were three yeah. and grow up together and you know start dating and yeah. then you know meet each other's family and then she but shows imagine, up drunk. Where's imagine, my boyfriend? Boyfriend. The word boyfriend. I know. As soon as I heard that, and I was. I'll tell you what. Even when she went in looking for me like that, I was talking to a girl or something. Like, just as nothing, like, you know, extreme, like, I probably would have hung out with that girl again and been like, oh, oh yeah. But I was just meeting somebody, yeah. and talking to them, getting to know them. Yeah. And she shows up like, where's my boyfriend? Oh, my God. I'm, well, I just had a flashback. <laughs> I, she, she actually, like, I had to, that, there was more to the story. I had to, like, I had to, like, she did come inside, and then she was, like, all over me oh i remember now she was like hugging me like boy but drunk very drunk yeah. and then there came a point where i was able to like escape and then my friend said he went over there and then she left and then she didn't come back to the club but there was a point where i'm in the club with a drunk girl who told everybody i'm her boyfriend and she's on top of me like this and like falling and it's like this is not you don't go from hinge date to this. Yeah, no, 100%. Any logical sane person knows that. And then secondly, as well, but firstly, she had the balls to come by herself. Secondly, she introduced herself to your friends because your coworkers are your friends. So like, right. being And I think she was with other, I think she was with other friends who were like uncomfortable the whole time. She like, she was like, oh my God, can you imagine this? Can you imagine you're with your friend? And she just met a guy on Hinge. And then you guys are out on a girl's night. I would let and her then, go. And then she tells all her friends, hey, girls, let's go see my boyfriend. 
and they're like, stop. And she's How like, no, she? let's do it. Um, probably like a year younger than me, maybe. Two yeah, so she's just young. She's just young. She might grow into a very logical, normal person, but young people yeah. and alcohol, woof, loopy. And yeah, then old people and alcohol, but I think. But that's the thing as well, because like meeting the friends is like a huge, like that's like four or five months down the line. You're like, oh yeah, I want to have a relationship yeah. with this person. Meet the friends. Or like maybe even three months, but like five days? No. Yeah, and they, they remember you like the the friends remember you if i introduce you yeah but if you show up and you're like where's my boyfriend where's my boyfriend they forget you after a month like where's my husband so yeah. you, so you did um you did block her in the end or you sent the message they're like hey, i sent the big yeah the big message and then um you know no one's ever happy to receive that message then it becomes like is there a way to end this with mutual dignity you know yeah and um, I think we did an okay job. Oh, that's okay. Then, she didn't turn up again. Right, right. And I think after what my move is after like a month or two months or something, if they put up something interesting on yeah. a site, I'll be like, that's nice. You know, yeah. I'll try to like transition. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think I like the that. worst thing you can do, the worst thing you can do to become friends with somebody after you've been together is to say, can we be friends yeah, yeah. just be friends yeah, yeah yeah no i agree with you i completely agree with you no that's great i actually that's funny because it was obviously at the grizzly pair right um there's no reason to create oh settings. no it's just because it happened same a similar thing happened to me at the grizzly pair so i was uh, i was um i i don't know i don't think i've talked about it on this podcast was this an online, an online situation? I met him online. No, I met him in real life on the train. And he was just like chatting to me. And then we got off. And then when I looked at my Tinder that night, this is years ago, he had super liked me. So then I went on a first huh. date with him. And I actually ended up having sex with him on the first date, which usually I don't do. But I was like new to America, drunk from fun and whatever. I was like, <laughs> but then I never his like mum got sick or something so I didn't really see him again he said he had to fly back to like LA or somewhere like the next day so I was like oh it's just like a one night stand and he hasn't got like the guts to tell me that it's just a one night stand but that's grand but then a few months later he texted me he was like oh I'm back my mum's better and I was like oh okay and then I was actually seeing someone so I said I can't see it but then when me and that person broke up I was like drunk and I texted him I was like hey come out but then when he came out, he was like really annoying and he was too much. So I just was like, oh, I'm not gonna. He was like, come to China with me. And he, oh. he was like, we're in the bar. He's like, I've got such a hard on for you. Feel my rock hard dick. And I was like, oh God, this is why you don't have one I stopped. And then go back. Um, and then he was like, just come to China with me. I'm going to China. And then I was like, no, I don't wanna go to China. And he was like, I'm going in a week. And I was like, no, no. And then Tori, I guess, said to him, we have a show, cause we used to run a week at the Grizzly Pair years ago. And she was like, we have our show tomorrow. You should come. And then I forgot that. And then I, well, I had three shows that night. And on the way home was the last show at the pair. And when I was walking down, I saw him outside talking to a comedian. And he was like, oh, is Katie here? And I don't know why he said, but I think he was under the impression that we were like going to like date. Uh, so I just like texted Tori and was like, I'm not doing the show. <laughs> I just, so I just didn't left. show up at all. Oh my god! I'd already done two that night, so I was like, Do you know what? It's fine. And she was like, Oh, it's a shit show tonight, anyway. So I was like, I can't even. Oh, I just man. can't deal with it. So I just like didn't respond and just got on a train home. <laughs> Nicely done. Just avoid the whole situation. Yeah, yeah. You get home, and you feel like you feel like you you did a shortcut. It's a great <laughs> feeling, I bet. Yeah, but he wow. still. I bumped, I bumped into him a few times over the years. He still like follows me on, um, on the socials and like, yeah, I was seeing someone else who he, I seen a bartender once and he would go to the bar a lot and yeah. Anyway, he, he's, he's always in and out of my life. <laughs> now, see, now this is the beauty of being distant fellas. Okay. <laughs> Listen up here guys. Being distant in that situation situation is genius she invites you out right the the quintessential example of i want to hang out with you tonight she invites you to the bar yeah. now do you know how powerful you seem if you go to the bar that she invited you to while she was drunk and you just grab a drink and stay like six feet away from her and just like talk from afar for a little bit and like don't 
go all in like you would expect. Yeah, don't invite me to China. Then you have all all the power. You don't invite her to China. (laughs) You You don't turn up to the show that I didn't invite you to. You, yeah, you barely, you know, you just bob and weave in the background, just like stay in the background. Like, have you ever, have you ever, have you ever been um, with your friends in like class when you were little and the, the kid has a, has a pack of gum, you know, and then everybody's like, can I get a gum? Can I get a gum? Can I get a gum? And he's like, I'm not, just leave me alone. And then you just wait and you don't say anything. And then he's like, you know what guys? Hey, Marcelo, do you want a gum? <laughs> You're sitting there so politely and nicely. Well, maybe I should give you a gum. And I'm like, yeah, I'd love gum. It's the same with pussy. <laughs> <laughs> the pussy is gum. <laughs> I've said so many words that- today on this podcast that I've never said before. Fabulous, you're from pussy. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you've never said that word and I can feel it. <laughs> pussy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, oh my god okay so we're 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 up to time plug yourself right um my name is marcel Hernandez. <laughs> okay um i um i'm about to start making some pretty cool videos look at check this out i have a, um you your videos are the best have, some of my irish friends already already follow you they love your videos i have my camera and um I'm thinking about putting the green screen. I might be done with the green screen, but I'm going to start putting like images up and I'm, I just bought a microphone. So the audio is going to be good. So I'm going to start making videos. Um, you can put my Instagram is uh, at Marcelo, M-A-R-C-E-L-L-O-H-D-Z. And then that's pretty much where I put all my stuff. So yeah. It's great. Okay. Thank you so much. This is so much fun.